Hello and welcome to this session. This is Professor Farhat in which we would look at the AMT or the Alternative Minimum Tax, a topic that's dreaded by students and CPA candidate. This, this is part one of five. So in other words, I'm going to have four subsequent session to this one. So you want to make sure you build your knowledge step by step. And this is how I teach versus a CPA review course where they review the material with you. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to build your knowledge. What's an AMT starting slowly and build your knowledge up until you can solve easily a CPA simulation. As always, I would like to remind you to connect with me on LinkedIn if you haven't done so. YouTube is where you would need to subscribe. I have 1,700 plus accounting, auditing, tax, finance, as well as Excel tutorial. If you like my lectures, please like them, share them. Put them in playlist. If they benefit you, it means they might benefit other people. Connect with me on Instagram. On my website, farhatlectures.com, you will find additional material. For example, under my individual income tax course or intermediate accounting or auditing or tax or advanced accounting. If you're studying for your CPA exam, additional resources to help you succeed on the exam. So first, I'm going to introduce the basic idea of AMT. What is the, what's the idea of AMT? So I'm going to give you two examples, two taxpayers as an example, and show you why AMT exists. Let's assume taxpayer one, 22 years old. Um, this individual studied accounting and they just graduated and they get a job offer for $50,050. They have some savings from their parents. They're earning interest of $150. Their total income is $50,200. Taxable income is their total income minus the standard deduction happens to be 12,200. Their signal, single, their taxable income is 38,000. Now bear in mind that this individual, they work in a CPA firm. Once they watch Farhat lectures and they pass the exam, their salary should go up to 65,000, right? <laughs> Just by passing the exam. Now let's look at taxpayer two. Taxpayer two already has been established, 35 years old, very successful individual. They work, they have a job and it's their company and they make 80,000 or they work for someone else, it doesn't matter. They had a lot of savings over the year and they have municipal interest of 10,000. Cash rental income, 15,000, they have a rental property and as a result, they have income, cash rental income. It means they're generating cash income. It doesn't mean it's taxable because you will see later that you could generate cash rental, but it could have tax deduction. They own two homes. Uh, they pay interest in total 20,000 and they pay in total taxes 10,000. They give they gave the charity 8,000. They started the business and incurred 10,000 of losses. And they have a tax deduction rental property of 25,000 because remember they have a rental property. So on paper, they're losing because they have a large depreciation. So let's take a look at what's happening here. They have wages of 80,000. This 10,000 is not taxable. This cash rental income, you're gonna, it's not going to be taxable because on, on, on tax basis, they're losing. They own two homes. So they're going to be able to deduct 20 and 30,000. So they have a 30,000 of deductions, standard deduction. They have an additional 8,000 of charities. They started a small business. They generated 10,000 of losses. And they have 25,000 in rental property losses, legal property losses. So simply put, after all said and done, if you did the, if you do the math, I believe taxable income should be twenty four thousand. Therefore, their taxable income is twenty four thousand. So notice the amount of income this individual has versus this individual, and you will notice they have taxable income less than this college students. So that's the purpose of AMT is to provide equitable distribution of tax burden. So the 35 years old is paying less taxes, which is not fair. So what the government is saying is come back here. We gave you a lot of deductions. We need to talk to you again because you make so much money. So it's raising the tax without raising the tax. Basically, the politician love the AMT because you can say I did not raise the tax. And what you do is you subject people to do different tax return. Uh, Ray, uh, President Reagan was known for that because he said, you know, read my lips. I'm not going to be raising the taxes. He did not raise the taxes, but the AMT was an indirect raise of taxes. So you could raise the tax tax rate without raising the actual tax rate that people are aware of. So let's take a look technically of how the AMT work and start to kind of from a practical perspective, how does it work? There is a formula and here's how it works. And don't worry, we're going to be working plenty of numbers shortly. You start with your regu regular taxable income. So you compute your regular regular taxable income. And at this point, if you're studying AMT, it means you know how to compute your regular taxable income. Then you add back your standard deduction. If you took your standard deduction, you add it back. Then you have certain adjustments where we call them reconciling items. Those are sometimes pluses, sometimes minuses. We're going to talk about them. 
Then you add something called preferences. We'll talk about preferences later on. And that's going to give us alternative minimal, minimum taxable income before exemption. Then the government gives you an exemption. We'll talk about the exemption later on. It's subject to inflation, so it changes from year to year. We'll have a one whole session about exemption. And from that, we will compute alternative minimum, minimum taxable income base. We'll take this number, we'll multiply it by either 26% or 28%, depending on how much your number in the AMTI. And that differ from year to year. For example, 2020, I believe it's around 100 94,000 plus up to this amount you pay 26%. Above that amount you pay 28% less 37.26. Then you get to your tentative AMT before credit. Then you are allowed certain credit, especially the, the foreign credit. From that you'll get your AMT tax, which is the AMT. I add, I add the word tax to tell you it's you know it's tax, but it's AMT is the tax. Then what you do is you compare your AMT to your regular tax. So if you paid 60,000 in your regular tax and your AMT end up to be 65, guess what? You're gonna have to pay an additional $5,000. You have to pay an additional $5,000. So let's start to take a look at these adjustments. So if it's standard deduction, it's easy, you add it back. So what are some, what are some adjustments? Well, let's start with Schedule A. So if you have a lot of deductions on Schedule A, they may take some of it. Now with the new tax, Tax Cuts and Jobs Act, you know, the AMT is not a big deal anymore, but we have to learn about it. So first, again, if you took the standard deduction, you have to add it back. What happened if you itemized? Well, if you itemized, the following are al allowed for AMT deduction. So the following are allowed, not allowing, are allowed for AMT deduction. So if you took your medical deduction, you could still take it for AMT. If you took your mortgage interest, you can still take it. Charity, you can take the charity. You can take any miscellaneous deduction if you did file for them. However, state and local tax deduction are added back. And simply put, the maximum you can deduct on your Schedule A is 10,000 under the Tax Cuts and Jobs Act. So simply put, you might have to add back $10,000 of state and local deduction. Not a big deal. No, that's not a big deal anymore. Because this, this used to be for some people, 50,000 you know, 75,000 for some people. If you own two homes and you make a lot of money, you're paying local and state taxes, you would have a large deduction. That's no longer the case. Even if you have those expenditure, you can only deduct 10,000. You know, ask President Trump about that, okay? Now, here's Schedule A. So let's assume we're looking at this Schedule A, this individual, and hopefully you're familiar with Schedule A. They have medical expenses of 65,450. Notice taxes you paid, the maximum is 10,000. Interest paid, 15400 Gifts to charity, 12800 Therefore, their total itemized deduction is 103650 Here's what they can do. For regular tax, they can take the, the, the deduction. It doesn't apply for AMT, so they could take it for AMT. They don't need to make any adjustment. The taxes, they can deduct it for regular tax on Schedule A. They cannot take it for the AMT. Therefore, the AMT is an adjustment. Mortgage interest, remember, you can take it for regular tax, you can take it for AMT. Charitable contribution, you can take it for regular tax, you can take it for AMT. Simply put, after all said and done, basically, you have to add back 10,000 to, uh, to your AMT alter alternative minimum tax. Now, also, you might have depreciation. If you have a business and you're depreciating asset, guess what? You're going to be subject to different depreciation rule. Under regular tax, if you have a real property placed in service after 1986, but before 1999, for regular tax, you would use the straight line and you would use either 27.5 years for all rent rental property or for 39 years for non-residential real property. That's what you do on for regular basis. For AMT, you would still use the straight line However, you would use 40 years for both assets. What happened is, it doesn't make a difference for the uh, non-residential property. Simply put, the, the, the Congress said, you know, don't worry about the 39 non-residential property. You don't have to make an adjustment for it. But you have to make an adjustment for the 27.5 rental residential because it makes a difference. Because what you do is you take that asset and you spread it over 40 years, your deduction goes down. So the government wants to charge you more in taxes. Any real property after 1998, there's a, no AMT adjustment. For personal property after 1986, but before 1999, you would use the 200 double declining balance. What you have to use, you have to use the 150 double declining balance. Simply put, they're going to trim down your, your depreciation for rental residential, 
and for personal property. That's basically what they're doing. That's simply put. So let's take a look at an example for commercial property to show you it's not a big deal for commercial property because under regular tax, it's 39, 39 years. Under uh, AMT, it's 40. So one year, it's not going to make a difference. So let's assume Adam purchased a warehouse for 310000 in August 1998. The regular depreciation AMT for, for 2019 is calculated as follows. So for 2020, uh, for 2019, the regular tax is 7,948. And hopefully you know how to do this. If you don't know how to do this, if you if you don't know how to calculate regular tax depreciation, go to my deep, just Google forehead depreciation or go to my YouTube at Google forehead depreciation or how to compute depreciation and you will find it. Specifically, I believe it's chapter six or seven in my income tax course. For AMT, you will have to use 2.5. So simply put, the government said, if the difference is 198, just don't worry about it because the difference between those two is one year. So basically, you're taking a 30-year property, turn it into a 40-year property. It's not going to make that much of a difference. The government says, don't worry about it. So that's that's what we're saying. So you do have a different schedule for, uh, for AMT real property. This is the AMT real property schedule, and this is the AMT personal property. Here, again... We did the computation just for illustration, but don't worry about it. Let's assume the same building was an apartment building. Now, it makes a difference. Why? Because for, re for regular tax, you are deducting depreciation based on a 27.5 year life. For AMT, you're turning that into 40 years. So let's make, take a look at Adam, same property, but now it's apartment building. For regular tax depreciation, Adam can take $11,275 in regular tax depreciation for makers, I'm sorry, for, this is makers, or type far hat makers somewhere, and you will find this. For AMT, you multiply it by 2.5, and this is what I was trying to say about the schedule. Let me go back to the schedule. So what you do for the schedule, it's between year two and year four, 40, you multiply it by 2.5. So notice it does make a difference. Now you're talking about $3,525 difference. Now for large companies, add more zeros or individuals with a lot of property, you add more zeros to this. So the difference is substantial. That's the point. Okay. So let's assume Adam also had two depreciable business assets, like two pieces of furniture. AMT depreciated is computed based on 150 double declining uh, versus the makers is 200 double declining. So let's take a look and compute the depreciation. So, and we are in year eight for this example. Simply put, we bought an asset in 2012. So the half year convention applied good. The half year convention apply here. It's a seven year life asset for makers, for makers. If you don't know how to compute this, again, Google makers for hat tax or something like that, 312 and 535. Now, if we go to the alternative minimum tax and we compute this based on the 155 declining balance, what's gonna happen is we're in year eight and the asset is a seven year property, therefore the rate is 6.13. So we'll take this 7,000 times 6.13, we'll get 429, we'll take 12,000 times 6.13, and we'll get 201. What happened here? The answers are negative. What does that mean? It means as far as AMT, now we have less, we have I'm sorry, we have more deduction. So we have basically a negative adjustment, which is good as a negative adjustment. Good as a negative adjustment. So take a look at this Excel sheet and the regular taxable income we're gonna assume is 154,650, it's giving. The first thing we had to do is we had to add back $10,000 for, uh, for the tax deducted on Schedule A. Remember, we had to add it back because we took it for, for regular tax. We cannot take it for AMT. Then you guys remember, we just computed the 198 one-year difference, and we said that's not taken. So you cannot take that 198 because Congress said it's too small. Don't worry about this adjustment. Here, what's going to happen is we're going to have to take the difference between the AMT and regular for the rental property. Remember, we changed the example and we said, let's assume it's a rental property. When it comes to a rental property, the life is longer. The, the difference is 27 and a half versus 40 years. Therefore, the difference is 35, 25. And now we just saw that we could, we had negative adjustments and the negative adjustment amounted to $318. Amounted to $318. 
18 dollars so i'm going to put this as negative adjustments so negative adjustments are good why they are good because they are reducing your amt for tax purposes you are paying simply you are paying less that's basically what you are doing so let me get out of here negative 318 and there we go negative adjustment now obviously if we have different in the in the depreciation method then if we sell an asset we're going to have a dip different different in the amount of the gain and the amount of the loss why because if you have different adjusted bases one for amt and one for regular tax you'll have difference in the gain and the loss so let's suppose we purchase furniture on february 10 2017 for six thousand on march 2nd 2019 we sold the furniture for four thousand three hundred so let's compute the gain based on the 200 double declining balance it's a seven year property okay so year one it's 857 year two 1469 year three 525 therefore the adjusted basis is the cost minus year one minus year two minus year three the adjusted basis is 3149 now we received 4300 minus the adjusted basis gave us a gain of 1151 for makers so for makers we had a gain now we're going to have to do the same thing for amt for amt we're going to use a different schedule we're going to use the seven year 150 declining balance year one is 643 taking the asset times the rate year two 1791 year three 451 and here's what's going to happen our basis in this property our basis in this property is the cost minus year one year two year three the basis is 3758 now what we do is we'll take consideration received minus the basis under AMT will give us a gain under AMT of 542. So what happened is now maker's gain is more than AMT. We have another negative adjustments. That's good for us. We have another negative adjustments. Why? Because we did not take depreciation early on. We took less depreciation. Therefore, we have less gain. Therefore, we have a negative adjustment. So the difference between the two is a negative adjustment of 609 so let's take a look at the excel sheet and input that 609 dollars to see how this all fits together negative 609 so this is what we did up to this point so those three adjustments now in the next uh, in the next session i would look at the incentive stock option and preferences so we need to take a look at more more uh more adjustments because those are not the only one as always i'm going to remind you to like this lecture please don't forget to visit farhatlectures.com subscribe share it with others wait for part two where we're going to complete this excel sheet and help you understand how adjustments and preferences fit into this whole picture good luck and stay safe